Bachelor of Science A&M, of animal husbandry, pardon me. And here's Dr. Francis, and uh, I'm hoping they were doing a necropsy and not surgery <laughs> on that part. Next. Here, look, now we are in modern times, 1898, almost the turn of the century. I wonder how much they worried about their computers going haywire when it, when it turned over to 1900. I, I've always been bemused by what this is above this student's head. And we finally figured out that from a look on his face, the camera just happened to capture him at the time he had his first original thought. <laughs> This is Dr. Francis teaching anatomy, okay? Here we have a modern anatomy lab where we're teaching our students. Again, dramatic changes during this period of time, okay? What about biomedical research? Uh, many people today think that, uh, uh, that research is a waste of time and effort, and let me assure you it's not. There are many, many diseases, some I've already showed you, that occur in animals, that occur in humans as well, and there are many animal diseases that serve as models. Next. As you know, we are the cloning capital of the world. We have cloned seven different large mammalian species, and I'll show you a couple of these. Uh, go ahead. This is CC, or carbon copy, which is a cloned kitten on the left and which she's uh, half grown on the right, uh, but she was cloned from a calico cat. Her color was not exactly like the donor, which gave us new information about extra genetic factors that influence hair coat. Next. Uh, this is a white-tailed deer uh, that has been cloned. He's now three or four years old. He was cloned because the genetic material was gained from a buck with antlers about uh, uh, is just huge. And in his third year, his third set of antlers, he had 22 points. So, uh, and you may know that year before last, a, buck, a single buck deer sold here in Texas for $450,000. The two gentlemen that bought that buck set him up in a breeding facility and by selling his semen and some does bred to him in the first breeding season after they paid $450,000 for him, they made $475,000. So deer hunting is no longer just a recreation. It is a huge financial industry. Next slide. This is a, a horse that Dr. Catherine Hendricks uh, in our college cloned. Next. Next. Here is a picture of several species that had been cloned at the college, a pig. Uh, this bull was cloned from tissue that had been frozen for 18 years. We had a faculty, Dr. Gary Adams, that knew cloning was coming in the future, and this bull was naturally resistant to tuberculosis and brucellosis. So he froze some of that bull's tissue with a brilliant idea of someday we may be able to clone that animal. And sure enough, that animal is resistant to tuberculosis and brucellosis. Think what it could mean if we could populate sub-Saharan Africa with cattle resistant to tuberculosis and brucellosis. Tremendously important findings. This is a Brahma bull that was cloned from a Brahma steer that had been dead. And the owner's a wonderful guy that just loved this. The original bull was named Chance. This bull is named Second Chance. <laughs> and he said he is just like Chance. He eats like him. 
He walks like him. He looks exactly like him. He does everything like him. And we keep him in the yard just like we did Chance in a real big fenced-in yard. He has freedom. And he sleeps under the very same tree that Chance slept under. And I said, well, how many trees do you have? They said, well, just one, but he sleeps right <laughs> under. Okay. The Michael DeBakey Institute is at the College of Veterinary Medicine next. Dr. DeBakey has developed an artificial heart. This is it. Look at the size of that compared to the old one. This one requires your heart to be removed. This one, next slide, is hooked up to your own heart and it takes over the pumping and it, it rests your heart so it doesn't have to be removed if someone is waiting for a transplant. You don't have to go through the trauma emotionally and physically of having your heart removed. And the physicians at uh, Houston couldn't get this to work in the large species that they needed to get it approved by the FDA. So they contacted our cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. Terry Fossum, she put this heart, this artificial heart, into next several calves. And she had about eight calves that that artificial heart was in and working fine for about eight months. And because of the studies that we did in the DeBakey Institute, this is how the DeBakey Institute got started. This artificial heart is now in clinical trials in human, both as a uh, support device while an individual is waiting for a transplant, but also for people with chronic heart failure and they know they're terminal. This is giving much longer periods of time and it looks like that there might be a small subset of patients whose heart actually starts to recover when it doesn't have to work because the, this heart is present and has taken over the workload. Some very exciting discovery at your College of Veterinary Medicine. Next. Next. The pig's cardiopulmonary system, heart and lungs, are probably the closest to humans. Next. We train these pigs. This is done in collaboration with Dr. Janet Parker, who's actually at the medical school. Train these pigs to run on a treadmill. You see how slim he is? <laughs> the sedentary controls do not run on a treadmill. They're obviously a lot heavier, but they are studying what causes blood vessels in the heart to grow so that they can learn how, with individuals that have coronary blockage, to make new blood vessels grow. Next. This is surgeons working on a pig heart. Next slide. And you can see here that this is a coronary artery that they're implanting, and, and it occludes this artery. And what you will see in a few weeks is these little blood vessels here will become almost as big as pencils and they will grow around and bypass the occluded area. Many people that have severe heart attacks that live, when they come back and look at them, they see they've got these collaterals already present. And Dr. Parker and her colleagues are trying to find out what makes those blood vessels grow. Next. This is a device that's smaller than a dime. It's a stent that's used to plug holes in the heart that children and infants may be born with. You've heard of blue babies. There's a connection between two blood vessels that should close upon birth. It doesn't. And so it continues to bypass the systemic in the next slide. This shows what a blue baby's heart looks like. Here is the catheter coming down. 
The device is just fixing to be placed here. You can see there's dye down in this area. If this works, then the next slide, there will not be dye here because this will have blocked that duct that has stayed open. Now, obvious it's going to work or I wouldn't have told you that I'm going to show it to you. The next slide. You can see here's the coil. It's plugged that duct and there is no dye going to the wrong area anymore. Another uh, phenomenal advantage. So instead of having to open the heart for it to treat a blue baby as years ago, you can go into an artery, move that stent up under a fluoroscope, put it in its place, re release it, and it will plug that hole. Next. Oh, I just wanted to say that we're also doing some top secret experiments. I don't want you talking about this. We haven't published it yet. But uh, the next slide shows you a squirrel monkey. And no one had ever looked at anabolic steroids in squirrel monkeys or in any non-human primate. We wanted to try that. And so we treated this little monkey with anabolic steroids for a year. And the next slide shows you what he looks like. <laughs> Quite a change, but clearly showing the effectiveness of anabolics. Next. Uh, we'll go quickly here through some uh, slides. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, that's what it looked like years ago. Keep going. Uh, this is one of our lecture halls. That was a lecture hall that I sat in, in little bitty wooden chairs. And for only $350,000, we modernized it. Next slide is one of our other classrooms, as is the next slide, which is actually a computer lab. The next slide shows a computer study area that the students uh, raised money to help build. Next slide. This is the, the large animal hospital that we're now uh, building new parts to the veterinary hospital. And we want it to, to look like this so we'll have some architectural symmetry. Uh, we, we brag, we have buildings that vary from the mid-50s to today. And uh, we don't complain, but we brag about our, our architectural diversity that we have at the veterinary school. The next slide, uh, we have addition to the equine hospital. Keep going, Rick. Uh, you can see that this has 30 new stalls in it. We have a new hay barn in the next slide. Uh, uh, Rick, I tell you what, why don't I just stand right here and let me do that. I won't have to keep saying that. Uh, we've added an entryway. The college did not have an official entryway. So you can see that we have the Dormer and the clear story look to match the large animal hospital to bring it back together. Uh, even this large new building uh, for necropsy or autopsy, we built it to match or to look like the large animal hospital. This is a new device. A uh, hundred years ago, historically, uh, animals that died uh, were buried at least uh, eight feet under the soil. This, imagine as a pressure cooker that would hold 7,000 pounds of roast beef or three animal carcasses, put it under pressure and lie, and it's completely liquid in about eight hours and flushed into the sanitary sewer system with water, and it's very environmental friendly, and everything in it is completely dead. Uh, we've done some major renovations to the small animal clinic as well. We've got some other things that we would like to do. This is the old large animal hospital where I received my training. And you might say, well, there's nothing you could do to that to make it look attractive. But with a computer and a little innovative thinking, that's what we would like for it to look like. Uh, this is the old veterinary medicine building uh, that was on university built in 1956. That's what it looks like today. This is what we would like it to look like tomorrow. 
and uh, we are in the process now of raising funds to do that. Uh, the old small animal entryway clearly is one of the ugliest parts of the college. We've already received as a gift almost $100,000 to turn it into this, which again would tie all of it together, and we're quite excited about doing that. And that should be, uh, that should be finished uh, within the next year. Uh, we have the Stevenson Companion Animal Care Center where people can donate uh, money to the college and we will take their animals and they will live out their lives in a home-like environment as a pet and not in a kennel somewhere. And the latest historical event, do you remember when Rita came through uh, a couple, almost a couple of years ago? Well. Uh, this is uh, how it looked. It was supposed to come right over Galveston, Houston, Bryan. So they evacuated Galveston, and we had to turn the large animal hospital into a human hospital. We disinfected it, emptied it out in 18 hours. This is what a hallway looks like uh, on normal days. This is what it looked like when we turned it into a human hospital with about 360 geriatric patients and children from Shriners Burn Hospital in Galveston. Then and now, that's what surgery looked like then. Here's a resident doing the exact same type of surgery, a remarkable difference. She scrubbed in, the animal is covered with drapes, and in fact, in our surgery suite, you really can't tell if it's a human or our veterinary. The, the techniques, the technology are virtually the same. The buildings look like 100 years ago. Today, now, the, this is real. This is real. These are the two computer simulations I showed you. Uh, in a few months, this will be real as well. Now, some changes are not so good, but they're inevitable, and there's nothing you can do about them. And if you will allow me and indulge me, I'll show you a little personal history of my own. The left is what I looked like when I was a student here a long time ago, and of course you see what I look like today, and brother, there's been a lot of changes.